All right, guys, I'm putting together this little tutorial to help you and your new recruits get registered for You Can Pass. That way they can get started with their online studying as soon as possible. Now, if your new recruit intends to go to an in-person class, then you would not take these steps. But if your new recruit wants to do the online pre-licensing class, this is what you would do. If they're a new user, they would click on the top, all you would do is it would walk you through what you have to enter. What state are they going to be getting licensed in? Where does their RVP live? Okay, and we put these notes in the in, on the app that Georgia, and you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna select Marianne Dean. And then it's gonna ask for the RVP's rep ID. We also have this in the notes in case you forget. And then you hit continue continue and then it's going to create an account okay creating an account will just ask you name um, a mailing address going to ask you some social security number you would use their personal email okay as their login and have them create a password okay and it prompts you what type of a password and all the special characters and that kind of stuff so create an account once you create an account, it's going to bring you back to the same screen and the same screen is now going to be your registered. So you're going to log in. Once you get in here, you may have to click on return user and then you're logged in. OK, so how do you how do you start studying? Click on launch course. Launch course. Next. Next next and some states there will be an additional prompt that you may have to click on next and then the first time you log them in there's a couple of paragraphs that they have to read and you actually have to just uh, check the box that says you read it and you you agree so how do we start studying first of all i generally tell people they want to go to the study by topic okay try to make it as simple as possible the studying process can be a little overwhelming because of all the information but to just take away all the other options on this page, I start by study by topic. I want them to understand that when they click on this select chapter, their state is going to be different. It's not gonna be the same as Georgia. It's gonna be whatever state they're in, but they're going to see all the different chapters. Now they'll notice they will not be able to access all the chapters. They have to do the chapters in order, okay? So I generally have them click on the introduction, the introduction is just for them to read through and understand what's going to be on the exam. What should they expect? At the bottom, it actually gives them a breakdown. So for Georgia, there's 95 total questions. There's two hours time limit. You just got to get a 70% to pass. Each chapter, this tells you what percentage of the questions are going to come from each chapter. And a lot of the states that we've run across so far, there is a heavy, heavy, heavy attention around the state rules and regulation or the state laws for your state. So Georgia, for example, 37% of all the questions on the exam come from Georgia laws, the rules, the regulations, anything that pertains to the state of Georgia, 37%. Some states I've seen as much as 40 to 50%, okay? But I want you to kind of understand, it doesn't mean spend less time in any one chapter, but I want you to understand that just knowing your state rules and regulations can very, very, very much help you, okay? Some of the other areas that you look at that carries a lot of weight, this is this is a life insurance exam, okay? It's, it's just important to remember, this isn't a, a Primerica life insurance exam. This is a state life insurance exam, all companies, all life insurance agents that are looking to get licensed are taking the same exam, okay? So this isn't pertaining just to Primerica products, but understand you need to know about life policies, provisions, options, and riders. That's important. So is types of life policies, okay? It's gonna be important as, you, as you're getting field trained and while you're getting field trained, you're studying, going through this with your field trainer, actually doing appointments with your field trainer, you're going to understand this study chapter even better because as you do it with your field trainer, you're going to understand a little bit more about the process of completing the application, sending it to underwriting, and then when it comes back from underwriting, going back and delivering the policy. 
Okay. When you're done reviewing this with them and they understand what the test is going to entail, you click next. The next is basically what I call the chapter. Okay. The, the, the meat and potatoes, the reading portion. Now I tell people all the time, are you a good reader? When you read, do you retain the information you're reading? If they tell me yes, then I'm just going to kind of scroll down through here and show them. Here are some here are some terms you need to know. Okay, paragraphs, things you need to memorize. There's going to be little reminders here. Know this. Okay, anything that's in a gray box that says know this, you absolutely no questions asked will be asked that on a test. You have to know whatever's in that gray box. But make sure they understand that there's more than just a gray box. They need to understand these definitions. They need to understand how to explain something or how to differentiate between something and something. But as we scroll down through here, I don't necessarily tell them they have to read it, but I definitely think at least reading through it and understanding portions of this will help. Okay. Even if they're not a good reader and even if they don't do a good job of retaining this information, the more that they can see it, and they can use it um, on the quizzes and on the practice test, the better they'll feel. Now, let's just say you've got someone who says, I'm not a good reader. When I read stuff, it just goes in one ear and out the other. I'm not able to concentrate. For whatever reason, I just don't retain the information that I'm reading, okay? Those are the people that I would tell them to skip all of this all the way to the bottom, click next, and now we're gonna have them spend the majority of their time right here, okay? Each of these terms, are a different video that they can listen to and watch that goes back and reviews all the content from the previous page, okay? So instead of them reading through the entire chapter, they can sit down and take notes while they're watching these videos, okay? I always recommend that they have a piece of paper and a pen available to take notes of what they're watching, okay? Um, this also, as you notice, some of these videos are five minutes and 18 seconds. Some of these are three minutes and 10 seconds. We've got some videos in here that are super, super short. There may be two minutes or maybe even a minute long. Okay. But once they get through all of these videos, they may still have some questions on a certain area. Let's say they took a note um, on, you know, purchasing life insurance. They didn't really understand it. We'll encourage them to go back to the reading part and read just that section that pertains to the video that they struggled with the most, okay? And when they get done with all the videos, all the way down here, the last, what I call the review is what is basically just a, is what it, what it is. It's, you just listen and it goes through about seven minutes of just kind of reviewing the principles of insurance. And then you click on the last term here and now you're gonna go through the flashcards, okay? Flashcards, you start, just like when you're in kindergarten, okay? During which stage in the insurance process do insurers evaluate information that identifies adverse selection risks? Let's just say my answer is underwriting. Click show answer, okay? I got that one correct. So I click yes, and it moves on to the next. What, enti what entities make up the Medical Information Bureau? Let's just say my answer is the University of Michigan, okay? Show answer. Okay, I was wrong. So instead of clicking yes, I'm going to click no. And now it's going to house all of my wrong answers over here. So I can go back and review those. Okay. When you're done with all of those flashcards, you're going to click next and it's going to take you to chapter one quiz. Okay. As you're going through this, we just had this question on the on the flashcards. Okay. I missed it first time around, but I but now I remember it because I just reviewed it. So now I'm going to click. And it's going to tell me you got that correct. Okay. When I go to the next question, if I get one wrong, okay, as I click through these, if I get one wrong, it's going to tell me, number one, why it was the wrong answer. Okay. It's telling me in this example that the, the contract of adhesion is prepared only by the insurer. The insurer's only option is to accept or reject a policy as it's, as it's written. So it's going to tell you, number one, what the correct answer is, but it basically is going to tell you why the selection that you chose is not the right answer. Okay. Notice that my answer was conditional, but what was the incorrect, the incorrect response? It tells me a contract of adhesion is prepared only by the insurer, which means it's not conditional because it's basically saying, hey, you either take it or you leave it, right? You can either take it or you can leave it. I don't really get any say, so it's not really conditional. So it talks you through being able to understand. When you get to the end of the questions, okay? So after all 15, it's gonna give you a review of the quiz that you just took. 
I really, really, really encourage everyone to go back and review the questions you missed. I don't know why this is. This is human nature. We have a tendency to remember and learn from the things that we miss the most. The, the answers that you get correct all the time are the ones I get a little more nervous about because in the long run, if you always get them correct, you may very well just completely space it. It became so second nature during the, the study process that when you actually get to the, the exam, there's sometimes that we see that they... That, that, that they miss those questions. So when you get done with that, review that. Once you pass the quiz, okay, once you pass the quiz with 70%, it's going to allow you to move to chapter number two, okay, and it will take you right to chapter number two. How do they know if they can move to chapter two? Well, if you click on select chapter and it's still red or grayed out, it won't even let them select it. That means they haven't passed their quiz to move on to the next chapter. But if they do pass the quiz, it's going to open up the next chapter. You click on the next chapter and we're going to go right back to the same process. Read through it, know the definitions, know this, all the gray boxes, super important. Look at the look at the diagrams, be able to explain, you know, the difference between, well, what's the difference between just, you know, term insurance or annual renewable term, okay, or ART? What's the difference between decreasing term? What's the difference? You know, all of those are going to be going to be asked a different concept throughout the, the study process. So be able to explain all these, understand those. If you don't like reading through them again, you're not a good reader, scroll all the way to the bottom, click next. Once you get to the next page, this is going to be the list of terms. Okay. Once again, watch the videos. At the end of all these videos, here's a review. It's going to go through and just kind of explain everything that you really need to understand from what you just studied. Once you're done with that, we're back to the flashcards for chapter number two. Go through the flashcards, take the quiz, unlock it with a 70% passing, and you can move on to chapter number three. Okay, so um, that's that's really how to get them started. That's really how to get them going. I want to differentiate two things. Number one, once they've completed all of the chapters and got passing grades on all of them, now I tell everyone. You got to take two, three, four, five, six, ten quizzes per chapter. Why? I want you exposed to more questions. I don't want you to just take one and move on. Okay. I want you to get through all the chapters as quick as possible. But before you take your first practice test, I want you to go in and I want you to take multiple quizzes per chapter. Then once you've done all that and, and scored well and you feel pretty confident, I want you to click simulate your exam. This is really going to be in, in, in total review. This is going to be the most uh, the most applicable practice test you take before the actual exam. Simulating your exam is just going to give me some feedback to know where you're at, to know what you need to spend more time focusing on and what areas you need to review. OK, once we feel confident about simulate your exam scores. OK, and you may take two or three practice tests. OK, that's OK. But what we're going to do is we're then going to take a guaranteed exam. The guaranteed exam is, is the final stopping point before you actually go and take the exam, okay? I also want you to understand that it is what allows Primerica to prepay for a follow-up test if for some reason you don't pass the first time, okay? Every time you take a guaranteed, if you pass it, it will, it will guarantee that Primerica will prepay for your next exam, okay? So let's just say, God forbid, you... Fail it three times. As long as you pass a guarantee each time, Primerica will pay for a prepay for a follow-up exam, okay? Now, Primerica will always pay and reimburse you for an exam, but prepay is a little bit different, okay? Primerica wants to make sure that they, they guarantee you got a passing score on your practice test, we'll prepay for you to take the exam, okay? And then once, once everything's done, you should see a couple things at the bottom. Number one, you can look at progress report. You can see how many quizzes you've taken, okay? You can see how many simulate your exam you've taken. You can see guaranteed exams. You can see learn as you go. This is basically just all the different chapters. If you break them down, open them up and see just how many different, you know, uh, how many different numbers you can go through and play with and see how you actually scored in each chapter. Okay. But when you go back to study by topic, these are all the chapter quizzes, simulate your exam. This is the guaranteed we're looking for. We want to make sure that you're you un unlock or guarantee. Each state's a little bit different. Some states you only have to score 70. Some states you have to score 75. Um, just want you to be aware of what that is and I'll show you where that's at, okay? Get certificate. I've completed the course. What do I do? Click on get certificate. Get certificate. There it is. I got to take this. You got to send it to me and we have to send it into the RLC once you get the certificate, okay? 
But what I want you guys to understand is this information is down here for you. Okay. Here's the guarantee. This is the this, this is what we have to basically you've got to do. We don't have to send it in, but you have to do this to make sure that you are eligible for Primerica to prepay for your next exam. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm do some follow-up videos, just some more specifically, but I want to try to make this process as easy as possible for you and your new recruits. I want you to get licensed super fast because there's nothing better than making money once you get licensed. Let me know if you have any questions and you guys have a great day.